this, take a look at another story. And this story has always really, uh, I've always found this story particularly upsetting. When she was attorney general, remember this guy, uh, David Delighton, I think his name is. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And he went in and he got secretly recorded videos of Planned Parenthood officials uh, discussing how to sell body parts, basically. And he put this out. And so instead of instead of investigating Planned Parenthood, uh, she went after the guy. She went after the guy who got the videos. Is it just ama- it's an amazing, amazing story? I, I did one of my funniest videos. You can still find it. Uh, it was so it was so raw that they actually wouldn't put the name of the Daily Wire on it because it was just so raw about what these Planned Parenthood people were doing. Uh, go and see if you can find it because it really is funny. But. But Kamala Harris had close ties to Planned Parenthood organizations. Uh, she had received Operation Rescue, a, a pro-life organization, has gotten documents that showed that she received over eighty-one thousand uh, dollars into her attorney general campaign coffers. And so, instead of investigating uh, Planned Parenthood selling body parts, she went after the Leiden. She went after the Leiden. Here he is on Fox talking about this. Cut six. While she was running for U.S. Senate, while Planned Parenthood in California was contributing to her political campaign, did she recuse herself from the Planned Parenthood investigation? No, she didn't. She consciously and willfully involved herself directly and personally in the Planned Parenthood case. She had an in-person meeting with six Planned Parenthood executives from California in Los Angeles two weeks before the raid on my apartment. Then... He talks about the way she came after him as cut seven. Kamala Harris, in my experience, I've been on the receiving end of her abuse of power and her pattern of targeting Americans who have viewpoints that disagree with her own, targeting them and using her powers of office to try and punish them for viewpoints that disagree with hers. If you were an animal rights activist, you could do undercover video to expose how animals were being treated. And Kamala Harris praised those activists and used that video for her agenda as attorney general. But if you were an undercover journalist investigating Planned Parenthood and investigating the abortion industry, trafficking baby body parts, then Kamala Harris wanted to silence you, wanted to intimidate you, and wanted to make sure that your message was punished and didn't get out there to the public. So she, she sleeps away into office. She doesn't prosecute uh, corrupt priests. She doesn't co- prosecute police officers either who have stepped over the line. Uh, she goes after, uh, she scotches a deal that would keep hospitals around for a union to serve a union. And then she goes after a, a journalist, essentially, who gets the dirt on Planned Parenthood because she's getting $81,000 in donations uh, from Planned Parenthood. This is a dirty bird, as we used to say. This is a really... Uh, soiled person. And you can talk about, oh, she's a woman and oh, she's this color or that color. But you can't defend against corruption. Corruption is the worst thing in politics because it trumps uh, it trumps policy. You know, policy can't do what policy is supposed to do if the organization that's running it is corrupt. If the politicians are corrupt, it doesn't matter what policies you have. That was the thing. That's how Giuliani transformed New York. Uh, And Mayor Koch before him helped transform New York, not as much as Giuliani, but they did it because they were both incorruptible. Uh, Koch was more of a liberal, though he became more conservative over time. Giuliani was a conservative, but they were both incorruptible. And that's a big deal. This is a corrupt person. 